God's plan for humanity. Beautiful women, strong women, courageous women. Join Pastor Stan Hood and Elder Elisa Hood for their God-inspired tag team sermon series, My Sister's Keeper. Sermon titles include My God, presented by Pastor Stan Hood. See, some people come to church to point out sin, but church is for healing. The woman, the priest, the prophet, presented by Elder Elisa Hood. Sometimes you gotta declare in the name of Jesus, I'm not gonna move. Kinsman Redeemer, presented by Pastor Stan. Come every Sabbath looking for God to change something in me. In the series finale, guess who's coming to dinner? Presented by Elder Elisa Hood. Man, what shall separate me from the love of God? What's going to stand in the way of me getting to Jesus? Come out and flow with us. Amen, amen. Happy Sabbath. Praise the Lord, everybody. He's worthy, amen. Amen. I join with the psalmist and say, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Let's give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah.
Today. Thank you so much, my sister. Man, now if that don't get your blood rolling, I don't know what will. Good morning, good morning, happy Sabbath to all. My name is Elder Barry Brooks, and I have the honor and the pleasure to welcome you all here this beautiful Sabbath day. Yes, it's a little cold outside, it's a little cloudy, but you know, this is the day that God has made. And we will be glad in it. Amen? Amen. And thank you so much. Man, I needed that. I needed that. We will start by standing and saying the fourth commandment. Hallelujah. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day, Sabbath, of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy strangers that within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the seas and all them within the earth, and rested the Sabbath day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and how and how of it. Amen and amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We bless your name. Yes, God. You know, because we realize each and every day this past, this past week, it has only been you who have taken us through the hills and the valleys. Lord, we thank you for loving us because we ain't no good. We are no good and you it's because of your love that over 2,000 years ago, you gave your son for us. Yes, you. you looked down the annals of time to this Sabbath and said, I'm going to have my son down the cross because of these people who love me. We thank you, God. There's so many things going on in the world. So many things that are affecting our daily lives, our every minute of the day. But Lord, you protected us. You've been with us. You sent your angels to protect us. They're here right now. Lord, we just thank you. And for all those things, for all the ones who went through the issues this week, Lord, we know that you've been there no matter what. Some of us here have health issues. Some of us here have financial issues. But Lord, we get on our knees. We get on our knees. And we come and bring it to the throne room to you. Lord, please hear our prayers. Lord, continue to protect us and keep us. Thank you for this day that you have, this Sabbath day that you have given us. And as our sister Hill, Elder Hill comes to give the, broke, give the word, mm, as she gives a spoken word this morning, Lord, let us get through that, get closer to you and in closer to each other. We thank you, dear Lord. We thank you for this time that you've given us. We thank you for being here with us and sharing this time. We look to go with eternity to you as soon as, Lord, we're just trying to, we trying to get it together so we can go home. We are getting sick of this place. But while we're here, Lord, let us be able to give thanks and give the word to others so that they can go home too. We thank you, Lord. 
In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Please be seated. In him do I live, move, and have my being. In him do I live.
in me, Lord. Yes, she was from. So, I'm going to tell you a little about me. Most of you think, but you don't. I am from Sweet Home, Alabama, across the Mason-Dixon line, and I'm a proud sister from Alabama. Okay? Now, if you are not from Alabama, I'm sure you have some relatives who are from Alabama. You know, many of us come to the north and we try to be northernized, and you want to act like you don't know people in the south. Well, you do know a sister from the south. Okay? And I am going to keep with the theme that we have talked about. We're talking about being our sister's keeper. And Sister Hood so eloquently spoke on Hannah and Penina last Sabbath. Now today, I'm going to talk about another woman. You know, I like to kind of move around. I don't just stay in one place. Sister Hill liked to move around, and that's why I didn't wear my highest shoes today. Because I'm not trying to be young anymore. Okay? And when I wore my shoes, I looked good in them. Now I wear shoes closer to the ground, okay, so I can walk down without falling. Okay, so Keith, the title of my sermon today is Push, P-U-S-H, and that is an acronym for pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. How many of you need to pray until something happens? So that's why we have to push. So this morning, I am going to speak the sister with the issue of blood. Now, I don't know about you, but I have had some issues in my life. I have had many issues in my life. And like I said, growing up in Birmingham, some of you think I am an only child. Uh -oh. I am not. I am from a family of seven children. Okay? So Sister Hill is not someone who's out there by herself. I lived in a home with a loving mother and father. My father always let it be known that he was the provider and the protector of his home. Now, Daddy was not a Seventh-day Adventist. He was a devout Lutheran. So in growing up, we went to church on Sabbath and on Sundays. So I guess we got enough religion for everybody in the entire community. Some things that you don't know about me is that I was a Girl Scout growing up. And when you are a Girl Scout, the motto is, be prepared. Be prepared. So I was taught to be prepared a long, long time ago for anything that comes up. Another thing that you don't know about me, when I came to Cleveland, well, actually, let me just say this. 
I'm a graduate of a historical black college, yes. HBCU, very yes. proud, yes. Knoxville College, where I earned a degree in psychology, came to Cleveland, graduated from Case Western Reserve University, Mandel School of Applied Social Sciences, and I served 32 years as an administrator in child welfare. Yes. So I have worked with people in crisis all of my professional life. I know about mental health. I know about family crisis. I know about dysfunction. And we are all dysfunctional. So it ain't nothing to be ashamed of. A lot of families operate under dysfunction. Okay? We didn't even have a word for it when we were operating under. We just heard about dysfunction about 25 years ago. But we made it through the dysfunction. Okay? There is nothing that Sister Hill has not heard. Nothing. Because I did counseling with a group of other and I have heard every story that has ever been told to man. These ears have heard every story. And because of my professional ethics, what is told to me stays with me. So when I came to Ohio, I joined a ski club. You didn't know I could ski either, did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sister Hill was an avid skier. Okay? She got so good, she started on the bunny heels and she ended up on the black diamonds. Hallelujah. And she did that at age 50. Okay? So I just want to share with you that their age has nothing, it's just a number. Age has nothing to do with anything, it is just a number. So I learned to ski. And I have skied in the best places in the world. So anyway, that's what a sister from Alabama has done. And that's just some of the things, okay? I'll share with you later, but I want to get into the word. This morning, we're going to talk about specifically with the issue of blood. Now, Matthew, Mark, and Luke writes about this sister. And Matthew 5... 25 through 26, reading the King James Version, my reading and your hearing, states there was a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. And it goes on to read and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and had not gotten better, but rather grew worse. Now, I'm going to show you a picture of a dripping faucet. And can you imagine just having a faucet in your home that dripped for 12 years? A faucet. Because see, when it drips in my house for a day, it gets on my nerves. So, you know, somebody going to have to come over and fix this, the plumber, somebody got to fix this dripping faucet. But for 12 years, you would have a flood after 12 years. So I decided I was very curious, and I wanted to do some research. So I called a very good friend of mine who happens to be a specialist in this area. And I said, Doc, what would cause a woman to have an issue of bleeding for 12 long years? He said, well, Deborah, I can't even imagine anybody living for 12 years with an issue of blood. I said, well, have you ever heard the story? He's a physician, right? He says, no. So I said to myself, that's why when I go to y'all, I come back home and get down on my knees and talk to the real physician. That's what you do. I believe in going to the doctor. 
also believe in a doctor named Jesus. Because he is the doctor that is in control of everything. So he said to me, he said, well, one of the things that probably been wrong, she could have had a hormone imbalance. I said, sounds likely, but I've never heard that. And he said, well, the next thing, she could have had some heavy fibroid tumors. Now, we all know about fibroid tumors. I don't know a black woman on this planet who don't know anything about fibroid tumors, including me. Okay? Because they are very, very common with us. And thirdly, bleeding. And with that, I agreed. Now, our biblical sister, who was just called woman at the time, she was considered unclean. She was an outcast. As a matter of fact, she was her own one-woman pandemic. Everybody socially isolated themselves from her. Because you know years ago when you came down with an illness, somebody felt that you had sinned somewhere in your life that caused this. Okay? That's not so different from how a lot of us feel today about certain diseases. Okay? We do a lot of victim blaming. But I cannot imagine, I tried to think about what it would be like locked up in your house for 12 long years, bleeding, considered an outcast. I felt that this woman had to have been very lonely, very depressed, and even desperate. Have you ever been desperate? Oh, I know about desperate. I've been desperate. Now, some of you sitting up here like, oh, Lord, God has been so good to me. I've never been desperate about anything. Oh, yes, you have. I know about desperation. Let me tell you about a sister who was desperate. Her name was Harriet Tubman. She did 19 travels from the north to the south to free slaves. And she was so desperate in her journey. That a brother who said, well, you know what, Harriet? I don't think I'm going to make this run with you. I think I'm going to turn back. We all know what Sister Harriet Tubman did. She was desperate. She pulled out a gun. And she said, if you decide to go back, I will shoot you where you stand. Now, that is desperation. That is desperation. Many of us have done some very Desperate things. Now, this sister, she had spent all of her money. Think about it. She had gone from doctor to doctor to doctor. She didn't have Medicaid. She didn't have Medicare. And being a woman during that time, I don't believe she had a lot of money. Okay? But she went to doctor after doctor, seeking healing. I'm sure she probably went to some homeopathic doctors, some allopathic doctors, and even some faith healers. Have you ever heard of a faith healer? You know, they still exist today. My doctor friend that I talked to, he says, uh, Deborah, they still exist. I have people who tell me that they have gone to faith healers. So these people still exist. But none of this helped our biblical sister. 
You know, when you are struck with an illness that is so severe, the first question you ask yourself is, Lord, why me? Have you ever asked yourself why me? Yes. When things happen in life to us, that is the question we ask ourselves. And why not us? We are only human like everybody else. It has happened to other people. So why not us? The woman was losing her physical life. Leviticus 17, 11 states that for the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So for 12 years, she was losing her physical life. But when I thought about this woman, I thought that she must have been a sister of great faith. Her body was weak, but her faith was strong. And when your body gets weak, you have to count on your faith. And our faith is the one thing that will carry us through the difficult times in life. Because you may get a diagnosis that all is wrong. There is no help. But many of us are standing today, standing today, because we have a God that sits high and looks low. And he places a hedge around our, his children. And we serve a God who is still in the miracle working business. Okay? Even the doctors say, I don't know how it happened. But it was a miracle. Our God is a miracle worker. He is a miracle worker. So her faith sustained her. And what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. So this sister knew that her faith in God would eventually Heal her one day. That's the only thing that can keep you going. There has to be an answer. Somewhere, someone has the answer. And that is why you push. You pray. You pray. But it's one thing about this sister. She did not sit on her desperation. Church. She did not sit on her desperation. She put her prayers into action because she had heard of a man named Jesus who was going to be coming through. And her faith was in Jesus. Now, remember, she had gone to all the doctors. They could do nothing for her. She had gone to faith healers. And I'm sure she had talked to people. You know how people tell you, well, you can drink some vinegar and vinegar. Y'all know it's a vinegar got a cure for everything. You know, you do this, you do that. She had probably tried all of those things, Elder Brooks. And none of these things worked. But she knew of a man that she said, if I could just get close to him, if I can just get in the environment that he is in, I am going to just push, push my way to Jesus. Now, Sister Hill knows about pushing her way up to the front of the crowd. Because I have been in the back of many crowds. And I know how to push my way through. I will elbow you. Excuse me. Coming through, please. Yes. Excuse me. Thank you. Coming through. Oh, yes. Coming through. Okay? Because if you want some healing... And if you have had a crisis in your life for 12 long years, somebody going to make a way for me to get through. And I just want to get through to the master. 
And even if I don't get as close as I can, but Lord knows I'm going to try. I'm going to reach down as he passed. I'm just going to touch the hem of his garment. And as the Bible says, the sister pushed because she had gotten up off of her desperation. You know, a lot of times we feel sorry for ourselves. And when you feel sorry for yourself, you just say, well, you know what? There is no hope. But your hope is in Jesus. That is your hope. It's always in Jesus. And Jesus will see you through. He will see you through the chaos in your life. He will see you through the crisis in your life. He will see us through this pandemic in our lives. He has always seen his children through. And he will continue to see us through. So I could just visualize this sister pushing her way. Because she said, I have prayed. I have paid money. I have done everything that I can do. You know, the crowd was so large, they didn't even see her. They didn't even know she was there. It's kind of like coming to church. You know, you come to church some Sabbath, and there are people in the church who don't even know you are present. Oh, yeah. There are people in the sanctuary who don't even know you are there. But God knew she was there. And God knows you are here. He always knows where we are. So we should not be embarrassed if we want to shout, if we want to clap, if we want to stomp our feet, if we want to sing praises. Don't you worry because God knows what you are going through. God knows what you are going through. So she just continued. To push and push. And as the story goes, that as she touched the hem of his garment, that Jesus felt the virtue come out of his spirit. And he says, who touched me? And the disciple says, with this crowd, who can see who touched you? And Jesus Turned. He turned to the woman who had touched him. He turned to the woman. And when Jesus saw her, she was no longer just the woman with the issue. But Jesus called her daughter. He said, daughter. Be of good comfort. Now, daughter is an endearing term. When your dad calls you daughter, you know that your dad loves you. You know that he has your back because you are his child. And he is the father. So he said, daughter, be of comfort. Thy faith, hallelujah, thy faith. Faith, somebody. The faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour on. Hallelujah. Can I get a praise from somebody? After 12 long years, after 12 long years, I don't know how you cannot praise the Lord. After 12 long years, the Lord will be there to answer your prayers. So whatever it is that you may be struggling with today, whatever your issue is, it may not be blood. It may be money. It may be your relationship. It may be your job. It may be your community. It could be a number of things. But what? it is that you are struggling with I want you to get up off your desperation get up off your desperation and take it to the Lord 
in prayer. Your friends cannot help you because they can't help themselves. Can I get a witness? So we need to stop calling on people who is of no help to us. No help to us. Cannot give you advice because they can't give them own selves advice. Their lives is a mess. So how they going to advise you? But I can just think about as Jesus turned towards this biblical system, the things that I could think that she could sing for herself if she was a singer was that old song we used to sing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of the earth will go gravely dim in the lights of his love and his grace. So church, just keep on pushing. Keep on praying. Keep on turning to Jesus because Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the only answer. Right now, we got a medication that has been put on pause. We don't even know what this is all about because I don't believe they're telling us everything. This is just Sister Hill. I'm speaking for Sister Hill only because when things happen, they just give us sound bites in the medical community. But God knows the truth. It is worse than we are being told. And yes, I have been vaccinated, okay? I have the Moderna. No, I don't. I have the Pfizer. I got the Pfizer. But something has happened, and something seriously has happened. And it's going to come out real soon. The truth will come out. But again, I am so grateful that I have a God that I can count on. He is truthful. He is truthful. He is there for us. He is in us. And everywhere we go, take Jesus with us. I am so thankful, Southeast, for you giving me this opportunity. Because like I said, I'm not a preacher. I'm a speaker. I'm not a preacher, and I don't try to preach. But I do try to speak. In the name of Jesus. I am going to always uphold Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I thank you for this opportunity. May you have a blessed Sabbath, and may God continue to bless the Southeast Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Let's give another hand. Praise the elder Hill. She did a wonderful job. Push. 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 Pray until something happens. Elder Hill, I took a lot of notes here. We'd be here for about an hour, another half hour, but I'm, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> but wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for the word that you sent through our elder Hill. We thank you so much, Lord. Well, we come to the time uh, rounding the corner, and we're coming to the time to let you know that, first of all, we want to thank you all, those who are here at the church as well, in the sanctuary, as well as those who are listening online. We want to thank you for supporting uh, Southeast in so many ways. Uh, we thank you for your financial support. Uh, we thank you for your love that you show through your tithes and offering. And Lord, we ask that you continue to uh, make sure that you're, you, you know, some of us do tithing, that's great, but please make sure you do your offering because your offering helps keep our programs going, keeps the lights on, keeps uh, keep us on uh, Zoom and other, you know, in, in order to be online and all those things. So we ask that you continue your offering. And we want to remind you at 2.30 this afternoon, we are having the induction for our, our Pathfinders. Amen. Amen.
So that will be here at the church as well as online. So if you can come down, uh, that will be awesome as well as if you can't, uh, we understand, and but you can watch uh, some beautiful young people uh, give their life to Christ in a different way through the Pathfinders. So we look forward to seeing them this afternoon. Also, please keep our, uh, our, uh, our elder board, uh, Jean board, we ask that you continue to keep her family in prayer as we've lost our uh, brother uh, board, uh, who was a uh, deacon here at Southeast. And we uh, please keep them in prayer as they go through the process. And, and we're going to miss uh, Brother Ward because he was just a, a wonderful teacher. And uh, I always I said yesterday that he would sit right in the back and listen to the word. And uh, we're going to miss, uh, I'm always going to look at that corner because of the fact that he was always there. So at this time, we're going to say goodbye and we look forward to seeing you again at noon for Elder Hood coming up for, for our preach word. We look forward to seeing you, so don't go too far. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in to our 10 o'clock service. Let's have prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for being here today for the words you shared through Elder Hill. We thank you for blessing us. And Lord, let us take those words to make us better and closer to you. In Jesus' name and to each other. In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. As uh, they give, the ushers will give instructions on how to leave. We, if though for those who will be leaving, we ask that you follow the instructions uh, of those deacons and ushers. Thank you. Let the church Okay.